Good morning. It's time for our Sunday school lesson for Sunday, January the 2nd. The weather made it impossible for us to keep the uh, sidewalks cleared off, so we're not having services for today the 2nd. Uh, but we didn't want to have a Sunday school lesson, so we're going to take a shot at me doing one on video and getting it posted. I've about forgotten how to do that uh, since the last one I did, I think, was in May sometime, maybe. So anyway, we're studying today out of Ezekiel 28 verses 11 through 19 and then also in 25 through 26 uh, it's entitled warns uh, we took a little break last week from Ezekiel and got the Christmas story in which is great uh, but we'll jump back into that today so uh, let me have a word of prayer with us and then we will study God's word together father help us as we open your word to understand and to take to heart what you want to teach us today open our eyes and our ears to what you're saying we ask in Jesus name amen all right, so we're out of Ezekiel 11, or 28, 11 through 19, 25 through 26. Uh, it's judgments. Uh, again, uh, it's verses, or chapters 20 through 24, God kind of, or through Ezekiel, kind of wraps up uh, his judgments on Israel. And then in, verse, or in chapters 25 through 32, he starts issuing uh, judgments against the neighbors of Israel, uh, seven of those to be exact. The first uh, judgment is against Ammon, and then the second is against Moab, then Edom, and then Philistia, uh, then Tyre, which is the one for today out of Ezekiel 28, and then the part we'll skip over in Ezekiel 28 today is a judgment against Sidon, and then he wraps up uh, that passage with seven woes against Egypt. So I guess Egypt really had it coming. Uh, so our outline for today is, first of all, uh, past glory. It'll be the title of that section, verses 11 through 15. Uh, then rebellion denounced in verses uh, 16 through 19. And then finally, you always want to end on a good note, hope stirred in verses 25 through 26. So let me read the text out of uh, Ezekiel 28, starting in verse 11, and then we'll skip over 20 through 24 and then pick up in 25 and 26. So let's read together. The word of the Lord came to me. Son of man, take up a lament concerning the king of Tyre and say to him, this is what the sovereign Lord says. You were the seal of perfection, full of wisdom and perfect in beauty. You were in Eden, the garden of God. Every precious stone adorned you. And then it names a bunch of stones that I can't say. Uh, your settings and mountings were made of gold. And on the day you were created, they were prepared. You were anointed as a guardian cherub, for so I ordained you. You were the on the holy mount of God. You walked among the fiery stones. You were blameless in your ways from the day you were created till wickedness was found in you. Through your widespread trade, you were filled with violence and you sinned. So I drove you in disgrace from the Mount of God and expelled you, guardian cherub, from among the fiery stones. Your heart became proud on account of your beauty, and you corrupted your wisdom because of your splendor. So I threw you to the earth and made a spectacle of you before kings. By your many sins and dishonest trade, you have desecrated your sanctuaries. So I made a fire come out of you, and it consumed you. And I reduced you to ashes on the ground in the sight of all who were watching. All the nations who knew you were appalled at you. You have become a horrible end, come to a horrible end, and will be no more. And then we'll skip 20 through 24, and then pick up in verse 25. This is what the Sovereign Lord says. When I gather the people of Israel from the nations where they have been scattered, I will be proved holy through them in the sight of the nations. Then they will live in their own land, which I gave to my servant Jacob. They will live there in safety and will build houses and plant vineyards. They will live in safety and I will inflict punishment on all their neighbors who malign them. Then they will know that I am the Lord, their God. So that is our text. So let's jump into that and see what we have here. So the first is that first section talking about past glory. Uh, who's he talking to there? Verses 11 uh, through what do we say, 11 through 15? Who, who is he talking to? Obviously, he's talking to the king of Tyre because it says, um, the word of the Lord came to me, son of man, take up this lament concerning the king of Tyre and say to him. So he, he says right up front, I'm talking to the king of Tyre. Then he begins to use a language that doesn't sound much like the king of Tyre. It's starting to sound like something completely different. And if, as you read through this, it confuses you and you're struggling to understand this. You are in great company because Bible scholars throughout the ages have looked at these verses 11 through 19 and have debated back and forth and can't come to a consensus conclusion on exactly all of what's going on here. So if you're confused, 
everybody else is confused too. So feel good about that. Here's kind of the gist of what at least I think and several, uh, several Bible scholars, uh, not me, uh, real Bible scholars, what they think is going on here. He's actually, this is because of the nature of the way the book is written. It's, it's about judgments against kings, against Israel, against all these other nations. So to say it doesn't involve the king of Tyre would be disrespectful to the text and the context of this. So it it's actually is a prophecy, a word of condemnation against Tyre and the king of Tyre. Uh, but he's using an illustration, and it seems like that he's looking back and looking at Satan in the Garden of Eden and using that sense, you're as bad as he was. That's pretty heavy condemnation if you say, you remind me a lot of Satan. Uh, another thought of some Bible scholars have, they was comparing him to Adam in the Garden of Eden. But either way, the, the initial prophecy uh, that is being given here is to the king of Tyre and is condemning Tyre for some things. And he's most likely is using the illustration that sounds a lot like Satan. So the same things that trip Satan up are what's tripping you up. So if we can look at it like that, that'll help make, think it help make a little bit more sense. So he's, he's looking at that and he's saying, these are the things, uh, and as you look at those, some of those are, are obvious that it's, he's not specifically talking about the king of Tyre when he says, uh, you were in Eden, the garden of God. So the king of Tyre was never there. So again, he's saying you're, Satan was, and this is what happened to him. Or if you like the other translation, Adam was, and he fell also because of uh, some things that we're gonna talk about. He talked about all the precious stones and he says in verse 14, you were anointed as a guardian cherub. That is not true of the king of Tyre. So obviously that description is not talking about that. He's making an analogy, if you will, that this, you are like that king of Tyre. You're acting like Satan did in the garden of Eden. You, Satan was a, a cherub and he ordained you. You were there. You were blameless from the day you were created. Verse 16, uh, then drops back and says, okay, verse 16, through your widespread trade, you were filled with violence and you sinned. Okay, that's back to the king of Tyre again. So see how it's kind of playing back and forth between, we're talking the king of Tyre, but we're making the analogy to Satan and back and forth. So kind of as you read through that, look at it that way, then it goes on from there after. So that's kind of who he's talking to. He's talking to the king of Tyre. He's comparing him to Satan and in that process. And then the next part is uh, that the rebellion is denounced in verses uh, 16 through 19, he says, because of this, because of all this sin that you had and the, the pride and all those kinds of things, and verses 16 through 19 really talk about what got the king of Tyre in trouble and Satan also. It says, through your widespread trade, you were filled with violence and you sinned. So I drove you from disgrace. I expelled you. Uh, your heart became proud. Verse 17, your heart became proud on account of your beauty. Earlier in Ezekiel, it talks about the beauty of Tyre. It's on the seashore, great commerce, great... Uh, economy, everything's going good, and you got full of yourself, and you got to counting on yourself and, re and relying on yourself, and that was your sin. Uh, then you begin to be, you know, your trade uh, was filled with violence. You began taking advantage of people, and that's what's your downfall is because you became so full of yourself. So that's what he is saying in this to King of Tyre and what happened to Satan as well again. And he said, so I threw you down to the earth. I made a spectacle of you. So he's basically saying to the king of Tyre, because you're relying on yourself, because you were so full of yourself, because uh, you trusted in yourself and you began to, to do trades that were not right and took advantage of people and, and made it all about you, I'm going to throw you down. And again, God is talking through Ezekiel to the king of Tyre saying there's a judgment coming on your land and this is why your rebellion, your pride, your sinfulness. You didn't trust in me, you trusted in yourself, and you're going to fall, and you're gonna fall hard. It says you're gonna go, um, uh, verse 18, so I, a fire came out of you and it consumed you. I don't know anybody that I've read that knows what that means for sure, but it does mean that there's judgment coming and it was, it was catastrophic, it was sudden, and there was no return from it. There's fire, consumed you and I reduced you to ashes on the ground in the sight of all who were watching and you have come to a horrible end and will be no more. So judgment is coming. Your rebellion, your sin has been denounced and you've been thrown down. Uh, and again, he's taking, talking to the king using Satan as an analogy and then saying, here's what's gonna happen to you. It's gonna be bad. And then he goes on in verses 20 through 24 and he says 
to the king of Sidon, and Sidon and Tyre were kind of sister cities and were tied together. He goes ahead and makes a, a declaration against this Sidon as well, and it's not pretty either. We didn't read that, but you can read that on your own. It wasn't pretty. And then he comes in verse 25 and 26, and he's gone through all this judgment on uh, all these other nations that, you know, in Ammon and Edom and Philistia and all the uh, all of those places comes to Tyre and says, boy, it's going to be bad for you. Comes to Sidon, it's going to be bad for you. And then verses 25 and 26, he kind of offers a word of hope before he lights into Egypt uh, in the coming chapters. He says, there's going to be a time, this is, verse 25, this is what the sovereign Lord says. When I gather the people of Israel from the nations from which they are scattered. This is a word of hope to the word to the nation of Israel. And again, Ezekiel is God's spokesman to Israel. He spoke to these other nations as well. But he's speaking also always to his chosen people. And, he, and he's saying, there's coming a day where I'm going to gather you back up. And it's going to be a good time. And it's, he talks about, they will live in their own land, which I gave to Jacob. So that promised land will be theirs again. They will live there in safety. We'll build houses and plant vineyards. They will live in safety when I inflict punishment on all those neighbors who malign them. Then they will know that I am their God. So remember, as Ezekiel's right, he's talking about all this bad stuff that's going on. And then he says, but there's going to be a day. And he talks in, we'll look, study later in verse, or in chapters 33 through 39 of Ezekiel, he expands on this hope that there's coming to Israel. So in capsule form, there's a lot of stuff in these verses that we read today. And you can go back through and look at all those things that obviously don't refer to the king of Tyre that, uh, are probably descriptors of Satan. Use, again, using him as an analogy of what sin looks like. That's a, probably a pretty good source to look at what sin looks like is the author of that. He uh, said, Tyre, you're as bad as he was, and so you, judgment's going to come on you just like it did on him, but there is hope coming down the road. That's kind of the lesson. So what do we take? What do we take from that lesson? What, what are we supposed to apply that to our lives? The, there's a lot you could do, but let me offer one clear solution. Sin, pride, self-reliance still lead in this day, today, in 20, I guess it's 2022 now. In 2022, they still lead to downfall. When we begin to trust in ourselves, when we begin to rely on ourselves, when we begin to think we're all that in a bag of chips, that we've got all this going on and look how good life's going for me, we begin to, to do that, that pride and that sin, that rebellion against God, God, I really don't need you. I, I don't. You know, everything's good, so I don't need you right now. That leads to our downfall. We need to always stay connected to God and put our trust in Him. So the question is, who is our hope resting in? Who is your hope resting in? Is your hope resting in yourself, what you can do for yourself, all the things uh, that you can accomplish, or is your hope always resting in God, even in the good times? It's easy to find, okay, God, this is bigger than me. I need to re re rely on you here. But when things are going good, when things are going good, do we trust in God then too? Or are we thinking it's all about us? And look what I've done. Look what I've accomplished. That's what will get us in trouble, just like it did Satan, just like it did Adam and Eve, and just like it did the king of Tyre, it will get us in trouble as well. So we need to put our trust in the Lord and always keep it there. I hope that it gives you plenty to think about. Enjoy uh, stirring through that and figuring out who's talking to whom and where uh, in Ezekiel. It's a great study, though. And again, if you're a little bit confused, great scholars before you have been confused as well. So enjoy that study. We'll talk to you next time. God bless. Bye-bye.